Now with our little CSS3 media query reporter in place, we can determine when we'd like to have where we'd like to have our responsive grid make its adjustments as we make this fluid and then responsive. So let's work on now the style sheet, the main style sheet, style.css. And here you'll see our basic grid we've got set up. This is just taking elements um, borrowed from the folks at Twitter Bootstrap. They've started out with a container that's 940 pixels wide and centered. And I've modified these things a little bit just to simplify them for this use. And then they've placed their columns within a row, which, among other things, they use to create um, a negative left-hand margin so that we can have gutter between our columns and yet have everything fit. So they use this class or this attribute selector that gets all spans to float all the spans of whatever width left and then give them a margin left of 20 pixels. So this 20 pixel width here matches up nicely with this margin left of negative 20 pixels on the row and gets things to snap into place to total 960 pixels when we're done. And so our span one third, and they offer, of course, many other span widths, but the span one third is what we've selected for this, and it's given a width of 300 pixels. So 300 pixels times three gets us to 900, and you add 20 pixels of margin for each one, that brings us to 960 pixels wide once we've got that row that has that negative 20 pixel left-hand margin. All of it snaps into place. So that's why we get the width that we've got. Let me show you the dimensions of this container. We're just going to add some background to this. I'm going to use that HSLA because it's fun. I'm going to use the value of uh, 270 and then 60% in saturation, 40% in brightness, and just a 0.2 in alpha transparency. So now with that background put on our container, we can save this and see the dimensions of our container. There it is. And I'd like to make that fluid so it goes full width. So let's do that. Now, div by default is going to fill up its available width, and so if we simply take off the width on this container and remove it, it's going to flex to fill its available space. So I'm going to remove the width entirely, save, refresh, and there we go. The container is now fluid, and it's going to flex as we go back and forth. Now when we do that, we're starting to get kind of a fluid layout. Our span one-thirds snap underneath each other when there's not enough room, but they don't do it very smoothly. As we look at how this happens, we find that they butt up against one another, as we see there. So we can stand to do some work, and what we'd like to do is actually make these things so that they themselves flex to fill the full width when we're wider. We would also like to push the edges of our site away from the edges of our window. So let's do that first. I'm going to take this line margin zero auto and change the horizontal left and right margins to be 40 pixels from the left and right edge. Now, pretty soon we're going to be drawing on some ideas from Ethan Marcotte. He probably would not like using pixels, but I find it works best to set the boundary around the overall container. You can disagree with me if you'd like. I'm going to use this for purposes of this exercise. Once we do that, then we're starting to get some nicer white space around the edges of our site. Now we'd like to make these span one-thirds fill up actually one-third by being percentage width instead of fixed width. And that's where we're drawing on some lessons from Ethan Marcotte. So rather than being width of 300 pixels, the span one-third should be approximately 30%. 30% because we need a little bit of leftover space for our gutter. We've got that margin left of 20 pixels. 
on each of these spans and so we need some leftover room so I'm going to give it 30% instead of 33.333 and see how the, that fits. I'm going to save that and now refresh and that's really close. Now we run into a problem as we go narrower though. This is working better than it did before you'll see. But as we go narrower our margins of a fixed width at 20 pixels start messing up our calculations so that it, again we run out of room for our margins in this case. So we can adjust that by making these margins be percentage width which is as Ethan Marcotte would have us do. He, should, he would be pleased at this point because we're going to go in and make our margins on this class span attribute selector so all of our spans are going to now have a margin left of a certain percentage. And I'm going to use 3%, just a nice easy round number. And the totals here happen to work. My span one third at width 30% plus 3% of margin is going to bring us to 99%. And we've got three of these, so that works out nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and also adjust this margin left so it's the same, same proportion negative three percent. This is something Marcotte does in his book frequently using negative percentage with margins and it works well. So let's save that and go back and see how this works. I'm going to leave it at this width between 480 to 768 you'll see and I'm going to refresh it. Hey they're back in place they're filling up their width nicely and it flexes real nicely up to 1024 and up. Zoom out a little bit, there we go. And that's not too wide, we see that those still are a readable width, even as wide as I can go on this little machine. But now when I go narrower we've got problems because that quite frankly is getting too small to read very well and we've got things bleeding over and it's just a mess. And this brings us to the need for adding some responsiveness to our grid. So we've got it fluid, that's a step, but now we need to make it responsive so that once we hit this width that just is too narrow to handle three columns, we can have it make a transition to have these things fill out the full width and just stack up on top of one another down the page. So that's where we're going to come to the media query. We're going to do that after the break.